So in order to build our drawers, we need to know what size our drawers are going to be. So I know I have 12 inches here to work with where I can put my drawers and I want two drawers in this space. Now I need to leave a little bit of room below the bottom drawer, some space between the drawers and some space between the top drawer and the top cabinet where this shelf is going to go. For the bottom drawer, I'm going to go with six inches tall and for the smaller drawer, I'm going three and a half inches. Now for the drawer depth, I'm using 16 inch slides. So I'm just going to go with a 16 inch drawer depth. So that part's nice and easy. Now for the width, I already have the drawer slides installed. You don't have to do that for this method. So we'll just do it without. So you want to measure your drawer opening. And here I have exactly 22 inches for my drawer opening. So now that we have those measurements, we can go figure out how big our drawers are going to be so we can cut down our materials. All right, guys, so drawer school is in session. Now, there is a little bit of math involved with figuring out how big to cut all of our parts, but don't worry, it's really simple. I just thought it would be easier to show you instead of just spouting out a bunch of numbers at you. So I'm just gonna show you real quick how the math works and why we're doing it this way. So from these dimensions, we get the overall dimensions for our drawer box. Depth for the drawer box, since it's gonna be 16 inches deep, the drawer box itself is gonna be 16 inches. But now for the width, our drawer opening is 22 inches, but we've got to account for our drawer slides they go on each side of the box. Now, these are half an inch a piece, so we're gonna subtract one inch to get our total drawer box width, which is gonna give us 21 inches, okay? Next, our drawer sides. So our side pieces, which are gonna give us our depth. Now these are just gonna stay as 16 inches. So that part's nice and easy, 16 inches for our drawer sides. That's what we need to cut those to. Now the drawer fronts and backs, we take the 21 inches for our overall width of our drawer box, 21, and we're gonna subtract. The joinery is gonna be a quarter inch deep on both sides. So altogether that gives us a half an inch. So we're gonna subtract one half an inch. This gives us 20 one half inches for our fronts and backs. Next, the drawer bottom. We're gonna take the drawer depth, our 16 inches, and we're gonna subtract half an inch for the groove that we're gonna cut into the parts. And we're gonna subtract another 16th of an inch just to give us a little bit of a wiggle room inside the drawer. So this will give us 15 and seven sixteenths for one dimension for our drawer bottoms. Now for the other dimension, we do the same thing. We take our long side, 21 inches, subtract half an inch for the joinery, subtract 1 16th for the wiggle room. Sorry, my handwriting is getting really nasty down here. So this should give us 20 and 7 16ths for the other dimension for our bottom. So we need to cut two drawer sides, 16 inches long, drawer fronts and backs, 21 and a half inches long, and our drawer bottom is gonna be 15 and 7 sixteenths by 20 and 7 sixteenths. Okay, so let's go cut all our parts. Now once all of your parts are cut out, make sure you go ahead and label them. This will help prevent you from making any mistakes and getting them confused or cutting the joinery on the wrong parts. Now I like to make my marks on the outside face of each component. This way I know when I'm looking at it, if I see the mark, that face is pointing out and the other side is going to be on the inside of the drawer. 
Again, this is gonna help prevent you from making any errors whenever we go to the table saw and we start cutting our joinery. I'm gonna be referring to these marks. So here at the table saw, I have a dado stack that is set for a quarter of an inch cut and it's a quarter of an inch high and I've got the fence a quarter of an inch away from the blade. Hence why this is called the quarter, quarter, quarter method. Now, one thing that's very important with this method is a good zero clearance insert. And don't use one that you've used to make a larger dado. You need the support between the blade and the fence. It's gonna be very important because we're gonna be running pieces vertically along the fence. And if we don't have good support here, that's gonna be a very dangerous cut. So make sure you have a good zero clearance insert installed and everything is set up just the way I said, quarter inch dado, quarter inch high, and the fence is a quarter inch from the blade. Now, before we cut the joinery into our drawers, take a couple pieces of scrap from the same material and run that through the table saw just to make sure that we've got everything set up properly. You'll wanna run one piece through flat against the table and the, another piece you wanna hold vertically up against the fence. Once you've cut the joinery into those two pieces, they should fit together fairly loose and have just a little bit of wiggle room. And the way to adjust this, if the joint is too tight, you want to just barely bump the fence over towards the blade, just very, very little bit. On the other hand, if it's too loose, bump the fence to the right away from the blade just slightly. Make another test cut and see if everything fits nice. All right, now that we've got our settings on our table saw dialed in, let's start cutting the joiner into all of our drawer parts. The first thing we're gonna do is cut the groove for the bottom panel into all of our drawer fronts, backs, and sides. Now, if you marked yours the same way that I explained earlier, the mark that you made is gonna be face up and it's gonna register up against the fence. So now that we've got the groove for our bottom pieces, cut into all of the fronts, backs, and sides. We're gonna take the side pieces only. Take your fronts and backs and take them somewhere away from the table saw so you don't accidentally pick them up. So we're gonna take the side pieces only and cut a groove into both sides of the side piece. Now this will be on the inside face, so the groove will be down and the mark that we made earlier is gonna be facing up towards us and we'll make a cut using the miter gauge and having the workpiece up against the fence. Now I know some of you may have heard that this is dangerous to use the miter gauge in conjunction with the fence, but in this case it's not because we're not making an off cut, we're simply making a groove into this workpiece. So there's nothing that's gonna get stuck between the blade and the fence to get kicked back at us. So this is perfectly safe since we're not cutting a piece off, we're just making a groove. All right, so now that our sides are done, we move those away and I'm bringing in the fronts and backs. Now these, we have to run through vertically against the fence. Now this is why it's important that we have a good zero clearance insert installed in our table saw. So you're gonna make sure you have good firm support up against the fence while you're running this through the blade. It's also very important to make sure you have the orientation right. This actually goes on the outside face of each of these drawer parts. So make sure that our mark is on the outside. The groove that we cut for the drawer bottom is gonna be up against the fence, okay? And finally, since our drawer bottoms are a half inch material as well, we need to cut a rabbit along the outside edge on all four sides so that this will fit into the drawer. Now I like to use the half inch material for my drawer bottoms because it's a lot stronger. So I don't have to worry about dropping a router or a skill saw into the drawer and busting out the bottom of it. This is gonna be a lot stronger, make for a very strong drawer. So to cut these, do it the same way as we did our fronts and backs. Good pressure up against the fence, running these through vertically to cut that rabbit. Whoop. 
With everything cut out, now we can assemble our drawers. I'm just going to add some glue to all the grooves in the joinery. And we just start assembling this basically like a puzzle. Everything should fit together nice and easy. And it goes together just that quick. Now you can either use a couple of brad nails to hold this together until the glue dries. I'm going to go ahead and pop a couple clamps on here. With the glue dried, let's take a quick look at these drawers. You can see these have some very clean joinery. Uh, it's also very strong. These are gonna last for a long time. And we have a good flush fit bottom on these as well. That's gonna be a lot stronger than any of those quarter inch plywood bottoms. So these drawers can take a ton of weight and they look great too. Now the joinery that you can see on the front, this is gonna get covered up once you install the face on the drawer. So the only thing that you're gonna see is the continuous grain that we have on the sides of these. So not only are these really strong, but they're also great looking drawers. So right now these are ready to get installed on my router table, which is a cabinet that I'm building for it, but that's in another video. So guys, do me a favor, go down hit that like button real quick. That really helps out my channel. Subscribe if you haven't, and please check out some of my other videos. Thanks for watching.